equivalent of 30 billion pounds of milk a year. And so that's a big, important market. And then suddenly, last year, the Europeans got off of their quotas just as they had problems with the Russian market, their primary markets. That put a lot of cheese on the international market. And at the same time, we had a good crop year relative for milk production. So that cheese belt that runs from Minnesota, Wisconsin, all the way to New York, is making records amounts of cheese right now. So we put that extra cheese on the market. Demand in the U.S. is strong, but not enough to make up for the issues of increased milk production in the U.S. and around the world, as well as decreased demand internationally. Put this in perspective for us. When's the last time you saw a cheese glut like this? Um, the, the biggest issue we had was in 2009, and a lot of that was uh, consumption was the, was the biggest issue at that point. And was that because prices were quite a bit higher then and consumer was getting hit hard? No, I think it was the economy and uh, uh, people were changing over some of their eating habits, trying to go to cheaper proteins and other uh, things. Right, right, right. So, so what does this mean for, for a business like Cabot and, and what does this mean for farmers uh, across the country? Well, um, for farmers, it's been a very tough situation because USDA uses cheese prices as one of the primary movers to set the price back to farmers. So they're getting some of the lowest prices they've also had since 2009. Um, it hasn't been so bad for the larger farms because they have economies of scale. Um, they can use futures markets to hedge their prices. But the small and medium farms are really having an issue. Um, as for Cabot right now, we're owned by dairy farmers. Many time our members struggle. Uh, that's a problem for us. Um, we do make naturally aged cheddar. Yeah, I was going to say, a lot of stuff says the longer it's aged, the better it is, the more you can charge for it, right? Yes, that, that's a good point. On, on doing that, and, our, and, and, and so the, the cheese that uh, is being sold today, it was made anywhere from a few months ago uh, to a few years ago. Um, so probably made in 2014, 2015. So you're not going to see much price declines in those types of cheeses, not just cabbage, but pretty much any kind of aged cheddar. Mm -hmm. But you're going to see substantial declines that have already occurred, in fact, in fresh making milk, a gallon of milk, for mm -hmm. example, or in yogurts, uh, fresh cheeses like mozzarella and ricotta. Um, should be uh, falling in price already. What are you all doing as a result for, for some of the things that you can hold off the market for for cheddar? Do you, do you end up aging more of it over a longer period of time just as a, an economics <laughs> example in supply and demand? We do that to a limited extent. Um, cheddar is a very defined market. That you, you'd have to talk to some of our massive cheese makers but they would tell you that they taste it, they, they test that cheddar every couple of months. And it, some, some will reach its perfection in six months, some in a year, some in a couple of years. So you, it, it's naturally aged, so you can keep it a little longer, but in doing so, you gotta make sure we make, it keeps that sharp, uh, great taste. Sure, and how, how do you see this playing out, or how do you see this situa situation resolving? Well, I think it's gonna be supply and demand have to move back in alignment. Uh, the pressure of the lower prices on farmers should, should start to curtail some of that milk production both here and in Europe. And then at the same time, the lower prices um, in, in various dairy products should increase consumption and move those back in alignment. The problem is it's going to take a, a, a good amount of time to do that. And in dairy farming, you can't switch between like soybeans and corn. Right. And so uh, farmers, you know, basically, um, have to increase milk production when the prices go down because the cows want to eat the same amount of feed and you, know, you need the vet bills and everything else. So we sort of like uh, create a problem for our, ourselves in the industry until enough farmers go out of business to uh, equalize supply and demand. In other words, everybody eat up. There's plenty of cheese for the taking. Bob, thank you for joining us today. Thank you. When we come back, Barron's making a bold